Hi, I'm painter master Karen Boniker, and today we're going to be painting one of Bob Ross's beautiful paintings called Blue Moon. And we're going to start off by sizing our canvas. And to begin, you'll simply want to go File and New. And we're going to set this can canvas size up by inches. And you can simply do that by selecting the drop down and choose inches. And here we're going to make this 17 and the height 11. So we're going to be working with a 17 by 11 at 150 ppi and then simply select OK and we're ready to paint. We're going to start off by again toning our canvas. So this is very important in this particular painting because we want to have a lot of strong contrast between our light and our dark values. This is going to help the moon to glow and the waves to glow in the moonlight and create that similar effect that Bob was able to create with traditional paints. So we'll start off by selecting a very dark color here and um, we're going to actually take that color and fill it, fill the entire canvas with that color. So it's, a, it's kind of a blue shade. Um, a good color to go to would be your Prussian blue on your color set, but then go to a little bit darker value of that color, almost to black but not quite. Then we'll fill that by selecting our paint bucket, coming over to our canvas and clicking, and that will fill our canvas with the color that we're going to use to get started with. If we're going to be working in this particular range of colors, then open your mixer pad and use your Alt key. And first of all, we'll go ahead and sample this blue and then we'll go ahead and put it right on our canvas on our mixer pad so we have that color to work with. Then I'm going to go ahead and sample a few other colors in this same color range and put those on the canvas as well. We'll go into some brighter values and up to some very light values and lighter still these are some of the colors we'll use for our highlights. Remember also that we can darken a color by adding black or lighten a color by adding white to it and mixing it. And this should get us started. Um, I may go to a little bit of a bright blue and add that as well. So we have a really nice um, variety of colors that we can choose from to paint our uh, waves and the sky and our clouds. So the brush we're going to start off with is called the wet sand brush and we're going to begin with painting some clouds. We're going to pick up a mid color here and um, I'm thinking that this color right here will probably be a good one to start with anything that works for you that you think um, you know is a good color this is a very nice oily brush so it's going to mix with a lot of the colors that are already on the canvas and um, we're just going to go ahead and put in a few little areas of clouds and while I'm doing this I'm thinking about where I want to put my moon so that's one of the things that I'm thinking about and if I place my moon maybe right about here then my brightest colors on the clouds are going to be surrounding that bright area so we'll get the most reflective light on these areas that are closest to the moon so I'm going to sample this lighter value here and I'm going to use that just to pull in a few little highlights underneath these clouds. And 
and we'll build these up a little bit now and start creating some interesting cloud shapes. Remember to sample color now. This is vital that you do this, that you stay within that color range. So just use your Alt key and then sample away as you go. Build up a few little clouds just floating up there in the sky. We won't do any blending right yet, but we're going to put our moon in. Now, on your Layers panel, we're going to go ahead and add a new layer, and we can do that by selecting the New Layer option. And you'll see that a new layer is added. And we're going to use the Moon Glow brush, and you can play with color here. Um, you can go with maybe a, more of a gold color if you want, or stick um, you know, to those blue tones, whatever, you know, where, whatever color you want your moon to be. And we'll go ahead and place that moon right about here. And I'm just doing a very light circular motion um, at, the, at the center and then working out. And, you know, based upon how big you want your moon to be, you know, let it, you can let it do whatever you want. So small, big, medium, whatever. Um, because we're on a layer here, we can also bring the opacity down if, it, if you feel it's too bright. But you can also play a little bit with um, composite methods too. So if you want to play with a different composite method and see how um, that affects your moon, this composite method, Lighten, actually does a nice job to create that nice feeling of moon glow. So I'm going to keep that the way it is right now. We'll go ahead and go back to our brush category and we'll select this time the glassy ocean and this brush we're going to use on the canvas layer and we're going to use that to blend our clouds out a little bit and soften those edges. Now if you put firm pressure down on this brush you're going to get really highly textured effect. So the best way to work with this brush is to work with a very light pressure and then it's going to give you a very, very sensitive, easy, very glassy effect to those clouds. And absolutely at the end of your painting, if you want to go in and do some more clouds, you certainly can do that. And I can see where I can add some more additional clouds even in this painting as even at just the start. So Now we're going to again pick up the Wave Blender brush. Um, actually no, we're going to go with the Blue Waves brush and we're going to select a nice darker value again. So we're going to go to this blue here, which is right around here on the color wheel. A good choice on your color set, again, would probably be the green blue, or the French ultramarine, or even your Prussian blue. And I think I'm actually going to stick with that Prussian blue and use that. And uh, there's a little trick to creating a horizon line and creating it nice and straight. And if you select your V key on your keyboard and then decide where your horizon is going to be, and I'll set it right about there and just click and then drag over and then let it go and you'll create a nice straight horizon line. A lot of times it makes it easier because it's just hard to get that horizon straight all the time and this is a great way to do it. Go back to your B key, select B as in brush, and now you can begin actually painting uh, into your ocean. And here I'm just going to go ahead and uh, what I want to do is retain a lot of those darker areas. 
and this is where we're going to be you know adding our um, beach and our waves so we want to maintain some of those nice nice dark areas because those are going to help us as we go forward to build our clouds I'm going to go a little lighter value here and a nice small brush and we're going to do a few little highlights across this horizon here sample that and break it up a little bit with a darker area this is the area of moon glow and we want to maintain that through the entire painting so at the top of our waves we're going to start building these waves and you see where these lighter areas are these are going to be <clears throat> your areas where you you will build your waves. And we'll let that light come right onto the beach. And we're just going to run a nice little edge here, which looks like a little bit of foam from the wave coming in. And then we'll just let that edge kind of fade out like that. The next brush we'll choose here is we'll go back to the wet sand brush and we're going to start painting our waves in. Well it's important now that we have that basic area of light that we know is going to radiate from the moon down onto the ocean and then down onto the beach. So we want to be sure that we capture some of that light as the waves are breaking. So a beautiful color to use here is to go more towards these turquoise blues, um, these aqua colors that work so well. A good choice from your color set would be manganese blue, cerulean blue, and cobalt blue. All of those colors. If you use cobalt, um, use it and mix a little white into it or just select it and then go a little bit lighter um, with the, the value there. So we're going to start uh, by creating our first wave here and we're going to build up from the bottom and work up and we're going to create our very first breaking wave and as the wave ebbs and moves into the right hand side of the painting then let that actual flow just follow it. So you're going to have a higher break here at the front of the wave And we'll just up, nice strokes in an upward fashion here. And then as I move into the distance here, away from the light source, away from that strongest area of light, then that wave is going to kind of ebb. And we'll let it flow right off to the side here. That's our first wave. Then we'll create another wave again, nice and light. And again, these nice brush strokes that just work in an upward fashion here. Nice long stroke. And you can see now why that dark background is so important. It creates all that nice feeling of distance, form, and adds drama to your painting. Smaller brush. You don't always work with the same size brush. And maybe just pull in a few more waves back here in the distance. Add some highlights. Always work with a different size brush. 
work with a size brush for the job that you need to do. Sample color. Start to shape and form those waves. If they're breaking in the background here, just a couple of little brush strokes to show that the wave is breaking. Just pull down with that color. go to almost a pure white right along that edge where the foam would build up. Maybe we'd have a few more areas of light. Always sampling color. Now I'm going to take a little bit of white here, almost white, and we're going to get a nice small brush here and run that right across the top of the wave in just a couple of places to show the breaking of the wave. Here, smaller brush. Again, right where that moon would be sh and the light would be reflecting the strongest. Now to do some blending here, we're going to go ahead and select the, again, I like using this glassy ocean brush for blending. Soft pressure, and there's, there's a part of me that likes, you know, a little bit of that painterly quality so I'm not, I would tend not to over blend this. I like, you know, those brush strokes, those strong brush strokes coming through. So in terms of the blending, you know, suit, suit yourself and what makes you, what you're happy with. But I don't think you need to overdo the blending here. You want to retain, 
you know, that look of brushwork. Continuing with the wet sand brush, we'll again sample that really nice aqua turquoise color and we need to get in some reflection right here on the beach. So we'll also bring that in. And give the beach kind of a nice glowing effect. You can then pick up two brushes here you could use, either Glassy Ocean or Wave Blender. And I'm going to go back to the Glassy Ocean and blend the beach and the reflections. Next brush we're going to choose is the details brush and we're going to use this to paint in our palm fronds and our palm trees. So we're going to start with a color. Um, I like this color called bronze uh, on your color set. Um, the other color you could use, of course, is raw umber, which is a good one to start with, too. But we're going to be going back and forth with value there, so we're going to be creating some darker values. Um, this brush will pick up some texture, so if you want to play with a little bit of paper texture, you can certainly try that. And I'm going to bring this down a little bit and see. I have the brush set to the paper texture called Sandy Pastel Paper. I brought down the opacity to about 49% and 50%, 49% is probably fine. And again, if you're feeling a little bit insecure um, about what you're doing here and you want to just practice a little bit, then go ahead and add a new layer and we'll do that right, we'll add that layer directly below where we uh, put our moon. So it'll, when it, when you select it, it'll come up as layer two, and the, this would be the hierarchy that you'd want to have. And on our palm trees, we're going to start off in the corner here in just a long brush stroke, kind of like that. And maybe we'll do another palm maybe right here. Okay, so you can see that it picks up a little bit of the texture of the paper, so you can experiment with that. Um, you know, try different paper textures and, and uh, you know, see what you get and what you end up liking. And we'll also go with a little darker value on the back side, and for that we'll choose the Van Dyke Brown and on the back side of the palm tree, we're just going to put in a little bit of darker value, remembering that this is moving away from the source of light. So we'll add a little more interest to our palm tree. and create a little more texture in it as well. But just remember to keep that darker value on the far side. And next we'll want to add our palms and the palm fronds. And you have a lovely brush here to use. I would suggest that you use it in a rather large brush size. You can see that I'm using it pretty large here. 
And in terms of color, um, it's, it's a good color to start with this olive green, and then you can work with some lighter values as well. Um, I tend to even go a little bit darker with that color because I like the ability to build up some highlights within the palm trees. So we'll start off with this lower palm first and just start putting in our palm fronds. And you can see that this one is dark. And let's go ahead now and do this one. And then the next pass, we'll add some highlights. So we'll go with a lighter value. We'll stay more on this olive green tone here and come up a little bit lighter in value and then add some highlights. It's up to you on what you want to do here in terms of color. Um, you know, you could even pick up a, you know, a, a nice um, Prussian blue and even add a little blue into your palms. But give yourself some nice firm pressure when you're painting these palm leaves in uh, and I think you'll like the effect. nice firm pressure on your palms. Okay, and you can continue to go in and add more details, maybe put some coconuts up in the tree, whatever, whatever suits you. Moving down into the beach area here, we're going to select a brush called Beach Grasses, and for that we'll pick up again, I, I, I tend to like to stick maybe with these blue values. And uh, whether you're working on that same layer or not, um, all you need to do is put in a little bit of a feeling of grass coming along the edge here and maybe even a little on the right hand side as well. I love the contrast, so make sure you have good contrast going on there, light to dark. Sample your colors when you need to. And you'll end up with something close to that. Now there's another beautiful brush in here called Bougainvillea and a lot of times in the tropics you'll often see the Bougainvillea right along the beach with the palm trees and just intermingling with the grasses. So a good color for that would be to pick up magenta and work with magenta and uh, quinacridone magenta. Those two colors will work nicely together. And to start building this, I would go with the olive green first and go with a dark value and then add a little bit of texture right around the trees here, maybe going up the tree a little bit. And at this point, let's go ahead and drop these layers too. So we'll go ahead, go to our layer and drop and layer drop and now everything's on the canvas and we'll just go ahead and put in these little bougainvillea nice dark color here and then come over to your magenta and then add the flowers and you can do whatever you want here have fun with that little bit of color. It wouldn't be a Bob Ross painting without some flowers.
And the final effect here would be to add some stars in the sky. And you have the perfect brush for that called Stars. And we're going to go ahead and select that. And of course we'll want a nice star color. So um, let's sample the color of the moon here. And up at the top here, let's reset this brush so we know it's a default. And I think I want those stars a little smaller, so I'm going to go with a smaller brush. And smaller still. That's about right. And you can just scatter those stars around the heavens. And finally, you can certainly take time now to go in and do additional details, um, work a little bit more on your waves, on your clouds. Um, I think the wet sand brush is another good one to use just to, uh, you know, maybe paint in some additional look of clouds. And you may have some cloud brushes that you really enjoy working with as well. So you can just go ahead and, you know, continue to have fun with this. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video of Blue Moon and Paint Like Bob Ross, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.